surplus and the bag was five dollars a lot of the buckles well most of all the buckles severely corroded with rust so we're trying to restore it or get some of the rust off of these buckles and we're trying a few different types of chemicals. And it looks like it's starting to knock it loose. So. That is knocking it loose. It's just since the rust is a kind of a mud, mud brown. It's not really showing up too good. It just looks like more rust is right here. But that did get look. Alrighty, so we picked up this outdoor products replacement hardware combo kit from Walmart. I think it was it was either five, I think it was around somewhere in the range of three to five bucks. I believe this was five dollars though. Got a good amount of buckles and good amount of things inside this little box here. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. Pour all the contents out here. Got everything. Alrighty, so what I'm planning on using. Is this one inch buckle around my waist belt? These two smaller buckles for the lid of the Alice pack. A cord lock for the lid as well to uh, for the where the drawstring was never like that big old ugly green lock they had on there and might find some way to use these two little two little um sliders here or retainers might try to find some way to use those might uh well there's really no zippers on the pack so the zipper pulls aren't really going to come in any handy on this pack, but I'm definitely going to keep the rest of these things. Always can find a use for some more cord locks over here. Now, just so you know, inside of this, it comes with four cord locks, four zipper pulls, two one-inch sliders, two one-inch buckles, one two-inch slider, and one two-inch buckle. That's not bad for five bucks, and they seem pretty heavy-duty. Especially this two inch buckle here. Doesn't seem bad at all. Alright, so let's move right on into the mod itself. Now, the Alice pack does not come with a sternum strap. And I wouldn't recommend a pack that does not come with a sternum strap, but I love the Alice. You gotta have a sternum strap on your pack. Keeps some shoulder straps uh, closer inside of your chest, doesn't pull as much on your shoulders. You need a sternum strap, guys. You have to have one if you're hiking any amount of distance at all. Anybody can carry a pack from the house to the truck. When you really hit the trails, that's when it matters. I had this hooked up on my Camo Alice pack, but since I'm working on my Odie Green one right now, and that's the one I'm going to be using when it's all said and done with. So, after my pack dries and after we do... The buckle mod, go ahead and get everything on. I'm going to spray it down with some of this Scotch Guard. Picked it up from Walmart. Worked on my hat okay. It seems like it kept the water off fairly well. You can see here, repels rain, snow, and moisture. Now we picked up this stuff called Crud Cutter, the must for rust. Now we've got this from Walmart. Um, yesterday got this from Walmart only three dollars now it looks like one of them crazy try this it'll save the world and it'll do everything for you so it looked like a cheesy bottle at first and I almost didn't pick it up but then I looked on the back this is a rust-oleum product now I took some velcro off an old pouch Made little loops with it here. 
and we're gonna sew it right around here so we can open it up and close it without worrying about it popping off but this is gonna be what's holding all my straps together or when they're rolled up like you, you would do with um, your shoulder straps when you cinch those down you'd normally have some velcro to roll that up and keep it in place with so we just cut this off of an old early molly stage pouch pouch made by Paraclete Armor Incorporated or Paraclete Armor and Equipment Incorporated excuse me but that velcro went right on the side here I'm gonna clean that up a little bit but we cut that off still got another side I'm probably gonna go ahead and cut that off and use the velcro from that all right guys the packs dried now all we're gonna do is finish these uh, metal pieces we're gonna remove any corrosion that's happened on the outside after it's already dried I'm clean them up protect them with some good old rim oil rim oil is nice because it's not water-based so it's a good lubricant and rust inhibitor so we're gonna go ahead and clean these off now all I'm using a little shop rag here gonna apply the rim oil to this and not directly on the buckles because I do not want to stain this pack don't want to get any ugly discolorings on here so I'm just gonna take this spray a little bit on there fold it over it down. there you go so now we're gonna start off with this one got the oil right here Got the rag. Let's see if we can get that to focus. All I'm doing is just wiping these off. You can see. Just gonna go through wiping all of these off. Now I'll show you one one of each kind of buckle here, cause you'll you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. Fairly simple, especially down there. Let's. All right, it's kind of hard to get the light down there but that was a extremely corroded area and rusty Just trying to get that right there it's like we got it pretty good and fold that couple back and just get this back just a little bit get you focused in there I'm gonna wipe that off So that one's basically done. Now, the final thing was in here. Fold that down. That was extremely nasty, extremely corroded. Just probably because people that's just such a hard area to clean. And well not not necessarily a hard area to clean, but an easy one to forget about. You don't really think what's going on behind this nylon right here. Now we're going to pick this button snap up. Got my rim hole. It's focused. You can see we're just going to rub that on all around there. And the reason why we're not just spraying this on, I already mentioned this, but we don't want to stain the pack. So you kind of like spot clean it here. So that was one of the buttons. Now we're going to move on down, down to the bottom of the pack, down to these things right here. So I'll do the one on the side closest to the camera first. So now these things, these were one of the things I was worried about. Now this side's fine, but if you come over to this side, it's pitted, it's nasty, it's got a, it had a lot of rust on it. That was one of the things that scared me. Didn't know how that was going to fare. But what we did is we just took a, a rounded file or a circular file and just went all around the inside and a little bit on the outside up here. Just so when we run nylon, these webbing, these, um, this webbing through it, it's not going to eventually start to wear that down. It's not going to cut that. Gonna wipe this down all around it. Just 
ones over here on the front were not were, were pretty corroded but the ones on the back here were not were, were weren't as bad they still had that paint on them and everything so on the inside they got a little corroded there too so we're just going to spray a little more oil on my rag here i'm gonna go ahead and cut this one pretty good so i can hang on to it <laughs> just gonna start with this and that was not what i wanted to do right here I was not trying to get that all around it hopefully that'll dry up and won't stain it but if it does we might just go back over with a rag might leave it alone though now on the inside don't really don't really care too much there you go i'm just going to do that all the way around this cleaning these off You can see, coated it fairly well, inside and out. I'm just going to go all around doing that. And now the last thing that I have to show you that we're cleaning up is these top buttons. These top button snaps, that is. Now, again, just like with anything else on this pack, just take it, remove on the top, remove on the bottom. We'll just take it twist it here just a little bit so we can get down the inside of this twist it just like that and of course we're just going to take it and wipe all around the button here and that was the last piece of the last type of uh, metal metal pieces that you're going to have to clean on this pack. We've already showed you the rings down here. The showed you these right here. Showed you these button snaps, the grommets up here at the top. So that's about it uh, of all the metal. So we're just going to go around. I'm going to clean up the rest of this, and I'll show it to you when it's ready. Alrighty. So I told you that I added a sternum strap here on my Alice pack. Or that I was going to so this is off of an LL Bean backpack good nice buckles and this was originally like a hip belt type deal on the bottom I never used it so I cut it off burned the ends kept as much of the hardware on here as I could and I'll show you how I hook this up here all I did was I took the quick release system. You see quick release, you take the bottom half of the lower receiver, if you want to call it that. Then you bring this up to the camera. Take this part right over it. You take the buckle right through that. Just like that and bring the strap down and then there you go you pull up and then you pull the buckle out and then lower half falls off so your strap fly up and your pack's not going to choke you to death so all i did was i took this this little half here made it into a little loop because this was this hardware was already on it so i just made it the correct length so I could slip it up to right here and where my lower half is right here and then I could just take this run it through it and there you go and then that's not going to fall off it's going to stay secure this button always wants to act up there we go so that's secure right there it's not putting any extra stress on any part of this it's just right behind everything so everything still works like it should and basically the same deal over here i just there was a um well i'll take this one off and show you 
there was a little loop left here at the end where it was sewn. So all we did was just tie some paracord right here. Enough to where I can basically do the same thing like I did over on the other side. Just slip this right up this webbing here, right behind this buckle. Take the lower half. And buckle it on. And there you go. Really simple, easy sternum strap. You could do that with your own webbing and your own buckles. Easily if you wanted to. Even put me a little first aid pouch right here on the side. I'm going to put me a first aid kit in that. And I'll also show you a neat modification I did on the opposite side over here. That I think y'all guys are going to enjoy. So stick around. So me and my dad are always competing on our Alice packs which one has the better stuff because we I mean of course you want to be the man on top when you're both hiking with Alice packs you want to be the one that has the best stuff so I was thinking my dad's got a pretty awesome system on the side of his pack how he hooks his axe in just a little bit of paracord loops it to the top grommets up here and the bottom grommets and just slips his axe right through real easy to take it uh, put on the pack and take off the pack Really simple, easy to do, but that's only four on the Alice pack. So I wanted something, a system where I could take it off, put it on another pack like my Philby, take it off, put it back on the Alice really quickly, and not have to have a bunch of paracord tied everywhere. So I'm going to grab my axe, and I'll show you exactly what I did. So I took these old magazine pouches. And the regular flap looks like this, a complete, almost teardrop kind of shape. What I did, of course these were out and attached, just slice these down on both sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in and I'm going to either sew it in the middle or just like somehow retain those and buy some more finishing ribbon and finish off this edge all the way to the back here. But I cut it on both sides because I want to be able to put my axe on a pack either way. So now, if I were to put, and I will, if I were to run my axe down through here. Now, this isn't going to give me any trouble because it was right up here where it was catching and it wasn't able to snap all the way. But now, hang on, I have to get on the opposite side of the camera here. Mount's in the way. Just take that, fold it down, and easy peasy, snap. And, but of course, I wouldn't want my axe this way on the Alice pack because when I put this on, this is all up in my shoulders. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is a mistake. I didn't mean to cut this on both sides. I cut it on this side first, not thinking. Measure twice, cut once, they always say. And I definitely should have done that. But it's actually going to work out better. Because now that I've made that cut on both sides, I can easily swap the axe around and it will fit either way. So this is the way you do not want it to be on an Alice pack because it will be all up on your shoulders. Turn this bad baby around. And again, I'm going to finish this up and I'll probably even do a quick video on Instagram or something about finishing it up. You see, easily fits right there. It's all good. And it works pretty good. Now down here, I have an old compass pouch. And in here, I just keep the, the puck made by Lansky Sharpening um, Systems. Or made by Lansky, and it is a sharpening system, I guess I should say. And that fits pretty well right here in this little compass pouch. And it's also right beside my axe. So I got all my stuff together. And now I'll take this axe back out so I can show you this. So 
So the regular bottom of a magazine pouch looks like that. But what I did is I cut the bottom out so my axe handle could easily pass through it. And I might even sew like a little stretchy cord, um, little kind of like the rain flies on the old Alice butt packs. Kind of something like that just to kind of make it look nicer. Because this is 110% functional right now. But that's ugly. I mean, all the ends are burned and it's not going anywhere. That's ugly. So, this is, and I'll just show you the back of this one so I don't have to take it off, a Molly magazine pouch. So I can hook this on an Alice pack, or, like I said, I can take it off and strap it to the side of my Philby, which is really nice, so I can have a really ver versatile system, take it straight off of here without even having to remove my axe. Strap it on the Philby, same deal with this, if I wanted this on the outside. Most of the time I throw the puck on the inside of my Philby, on like the lid. Or inside of the lid, excuse me. But it really just makes it a whole lot more versatile and easy. And when I pass my axe through this pouch, I run the handle through this little piece of paracord that I tied down here at this bottom. I'll show you that really quickly. Just like that. To keep the handle back. So that's a neat little mod that I did. And it's definitely a work in progress. So now another thing that I've done is I've gotten an old sleep system. Well, not really that old, I guess you could say. But it's a sleep system carrier in woodland camo. This thing. Ooh, I'll have to back the Alice pack up. This thing right here. It's got these two Alice clips. Now these two Alice clips do not line up with the webbing on the bottom of the pack here. It's two little spots of webbing and it does not line up. Now, since this doesn't line up, there's no way to attach it to the pack without doing a little bit of modding. And you know here at Robert's Bushcraft, we're all about doing some modding. Now I have these two little pieces of paracord here and I'll show you in just a second. When you hook this, these two Alice clips up to a strap, we've that I've added down at the bottom of the frame, you'll see that it looks like a lot of tension is on these little tiny straps here, or these on, on this webbing here. So I added these loops, just a loop around the buckles on the pack on both sides, just to take a little bit of tension off those. You just take this thing. Now this is, it's a good point to mention. This is easier to do when it's empty. Push this slip down, and you want to go ahead and get this. It's these little... These pieces right here on the Alice frame, where my finger's pointing here. You want to get the clip, the bottom of the clip behind, or pushing down through that. So if you kind of bend the clip out just a little bit, so you push down, when you pull the top of the clip out, and then you, if you push down on that just a little bit, it kind of widens the bottom out, and you can get, over, get it over this little lip in the frame a little easier. So I like this little system down here. If you don't have anything inside of this, it is a whole lot easier to put on, I promise you guys. I think it's a pretty hot subject on YouTube, and that's definitely the first thing we did when we got Alice Packs, is we looked up how to improve them. So now, we take these top little loops, and I'm going to show you how to do a buckle mod here as well. I've already done one, just as a test off camera, and I'm going to do the other one right here on camera today. So, you just run, you pull this back, and this also keeps it closer to the pack, so it's not weighing you down all hanging off your hips and everything. You just run it down past this little metal clip that we turn backwards, and then right below that, you buckle it back up, and with this side pulling up about the same amount, 
keeps it nice and close to your back, or nice and close to the pack, rather, and keeps it from hanging all off your hips. But I'll be mimicking the exact same procedure as what I did on the opposite side. So, let me work this just right. I'm trying to work around the camera mount, so if I accidentally bump that every once in a while, just forgive me. So we're gonna have this buckle turned down. Now I keep this on here just in case if these plastic buckles ever break, which hopefully I'll get a good amount of years out of them. Eventually, I know I will have to replace these, so that's why it's tied on here paracord. Nothing permanent, nothing sewn on, no damage done. So I know eventually I will have to replace those, but if these crack out in the field, if they uh, get uh, broken, anything they slip off somehow the paracord gets cut i want to be able to have my lid still on my pack without having to tie it down with some extra paracord or something so of course then you just take the strap that we just cut so i say this just popped off and then you take it and run it all back up through this then you still have a functional pack but the buckles do make it so much easier guys so much easier this is one of the first things you need to do to your pack when you get it. Go ahead and buckle model up. Okay, so we're going to take the buckle. We're going to take the oh, I'm going to take the top part part off. Set that over here to the side of my lighter because I won't be needing that right now. Now I'll grab my paracord. So, this is the back of the buckle. I'm going to take this, make a loop, pull it through. That's one. And then you'll screw everything out. See what I'm doing here? And then you'll bring it back around, push both ends through, and then back through the loop. So, you push both of them through, pulling them back through. Pulling that loop down and pushing it back through under the loop. So basically you get something kind of like that. You're focused here. Something like that. And then from here, now we're going to start attaching it to the pack. So you're going to want to take one end, push it through, pull it. Take another end or the other end. Push that through. All right, so now we're going to take this end Push it back up, up through like that. Scoot these over. Do the same thing over here. See what I'm doing here? Just taking these tag ends and pushing them straight through. And this is a really secure way to tie this on. Now you don't have to do it this secure. This is the way I do it. It seems to have worked fine on the other buckle. And I do not think this is going to be failing me anytime soon. So then we're going to push both of them back through the opposite way. Now, Excuse me for just a second. Oh, I actually never mind. I think I got something that'll work right here. It's a little tiny straw on a Rimmel can. Just get the front there. Push that through. Okay, well, hang on, I might be able to. Push this through my hands. All right, so you use that straw just to push that through.
Alright, you see it's coming out. Alright, got it. And then you just do the exact same thing back the opposite way. So, very simple. Just push that back through. That side was definitely a whole lot easier than the other side. And then you're going to, don't need that anymore, you're going to push one side in and make sure you want, got it as tight as you want it here because now we're going to finish this knot off here in just a second. So you push one side through again. Might need straw. Right. See how we got a little bit of space right here? So you push that side through, or push that side back, pull that side through. And then we'll do the same thing with this side. Might not need the straw, but I might with this side. Don't know. Yeah, the straw would help. Oh, no. Okay. Hang on. I accidentally just pushed my tag in that I already pulled through over and through again. That is not what you want to do. You want the this side to go through. Alright, yeah. It always helps getting the right side through the buckle, don't it? Yeah, that would have been real funny. Walking through the woods my whole pack lopsided. What's going on? Alright. Okay, got it through. So now, make it all nice and neat looking. And basically all we're gonna do, is just like on the side, just tie a couple of knots, cut them off and burn them. I'll pull this one up to the camera. So you just, just like how you begin tying your shoelace, untie that so you can see it. And there you go and now all we're going to do is cut them and burn them and then you'll have two complete buckles cut those off now we're just going to burn the ends that are left. And it's up to the camera. And you want a complete seal there, so you just push, push that down. Now that's not coming back out. That's nice. So now we just got to do this side. All right, and there you go, both sides. So now all we gotta do is just run the male end of the buckle. So then you're just gonna wanna run that up like this, up ways so you can tighten it down correctly. So you're gonna wanna 
want to run it through the the bottom one closest to the actual clip part bottom and then through the top Now I'll show you, and I, like I said, this exact same process for the opposite side. Now I've got a secure buckle. Alrighty, so with these mods, I can easily undo my lid. And I can easily button it right back up or buckle it right back up. Super simple stuff. Straps are fine. Everything's all good. Like I said, leaving these down here just in case this thing ever, these things ever break, snap, piece of it pops off, whatever, paracord breaks. Now, I'm probably not going to do a buckle mod to these up here. Honestly, I like the little system they got going on up here. It's not my favorite. Buckles would make it a little easier, but they don't bother me to the, enough to where, to the point where I think I need to go ahead and add buckles. They really don't bother me that bad. Just clean up a little bit of Irish pennants we got going on there. We got a real good one right here. And back here. All right. And um, that's basically what I, all I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day is just going all over this pack, cleaning parts of it up, and just servicing my gear. Just getting it, just getting it correct and right to where I can use it again. Sealing up a bit of stuff right here. All right, guys, just going to do a quick 360 of my pack with all the mods on. Just got a few attachments on the side. You can see my chest strap right here, my sternum strap. Blends in, looks official. <laughs> now here's a 360 with all my attachments. Got my axe, whetstone. Sleep system carrier right here. Medical pouch right here on the bottom. And now we'll show you a close up of the sleep system carrier and how it's attached. I think that worked out very well. And you know, sometimes with the sleeping bags on the bottom of your pack, on the top of your pack, it's rubbing a whole lot like on top of your neck, or it'd be rubbing all over the top of your butt, but I cannot feel a sleeping carrier at all on my back. So this is very good. I think it's to work out extremely well, and I'm extremely pleased with how this pack is coming along. Now, I didn't use all of the buckles and things, like the big two inch buckle quite yet. Now, when this hip belt breaks, which, I don't know if it will, it's a very thick, heavy duty buckle, but if you were to put this wrong, like if you were to go like that, kind of sideways, and you were to try to go, it might would snap. So just in case that ever does, I had that two inch buckle readily available, so I can tie it on paracord just in case that does ever break, which, like I said, eventually it might, so I always want to have that. And I did use the two one inch buckles in the center there, so I can open up my flap. And again, I kept those metal pieces on there just in case those ever broke. So I could rerun that and still have a functional pack. All right, guys, so thank you for watching. Um, I'll be, I'll make sure to record this on YouTube when we do the spray uh, down on this pack to make it waterproof. We'll have that as a separate video. And I'll also make sure to keep you guys tuned in on any other modifications I add to this pack. Best way of seeing all the little tiny stuff that I'm doing to things like our packs is Instagram. If you go to Robert's Bushcraft on Instagram, all lowercase. 
you'll find us and that's the best way to keep up with what we're doing so thank you for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully got some good ideas thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and commenting god bless you